Hello everybody, Konadra here. Welcome back to Automation, Car Company Tycoon game. Continuing on the regular series today, episode number 69. And we can't start this episode without congratulating Mr. GT1 Cooper for his domination of the previous fan build competition with Vector Automotive. His Cabaret Sport got 48% of the votes. Uh, the Buxton Flyer got 21%. My Vextron got 17%, and the AMW Raven got 13%. So it was decently spread across all four cars, but without a doubt, the Cavalry Sport dominated the board all week long. There was no doubt uh, the whole time that it was going to be the clear-cut winner. So congratulations to you, Cooper. And we will probably be seeing more of competitions like that in the future. But first, we need to continue on in the Vector Automotive Challenge build. I have now converted the Vextron over to the new version of Automation. Obviously we are now using the Steam version, and that means that the car's values have changed in some ways. I did have to redesign the vehicle so it may look slightly different. Honestly, I think it looks slightly better. And its values are definitely uh, better in basically every way. If we take a look at the detail stats here, the only thing that dropped significantly was drivability, which used to be tameness. Is down to 42.9. Uh, but that's not really a big concern. And the values are now much more even all the way across. Comfort came up significantly. So, uh, you know, those pluses and minuses, but it uh, overall, I think, benefited. Uh, costs have been adjusted. It is now, let's go back to review. It now has a total cost of $11,000 to produce. Economy has been adjusted, so it's now down to 25.6 miles per gallon, kind of like it should be. It is a V8 coupe, larger coupe kind of real drive car, so uh, getting 35 miles per gallon out of this thing was pretty unrealistic. Although the 25.6 may be a little bit on the lowest side. We will see how that stacks up against other cars in the future. But for today, we need to continue on I build a new car completely. Okay, the year for this car will be 2003 because we are now moving on one more year forward and it is 2002. We're designing a model for 2003 and due to the lack of success of the Vextron, although it did okay in people's eyes, uh, we don't necessarily have the funding to go out and do something super crazy like designing a whole new engine to go with a whole new platform. So I think we're just going to do a new platform, a new body, try and enter a new market. And the one I am leaning towards, let's use these guys here to kind of narrow it down. Uh, let's do just sedans because I want to try and get a front engine rear wheel drive sedan on the market. Uh, which would mean we need to select the front engine rear wheel drive one. And not a bus. Bus would be <laughs> less than ideal. Uh, I did install the mod pack once again, so uh, we have the additional bodies there that you may not see in the vanilla game, but I will probably be choosing a vanilla body. Uh, we have some obvious choices. Let's see, this is one of them. This is a very kind of generic looking sedan body. This is a larger version of that. I don't think we want to go quite that large. This one's a little bit more squared off. So we have that one as well. Uh, we have an outdated one, the, the town car, you know, police cruiser body. I don't think so. Don't think that's, uh, don't think that's sticking with my brain logic here. So if we go to just the last 10 years, it's these three. We have this one, or this one, or sorry, this one, not, not the huge one. I think I'm gonna go for this one. I like the sleeker look of this one. Uh, this one almost almost looks a little too boxy and doesn't make as good a use of its space. So yeah, let's let's use uh, this guy. No, this guy. <laughs> Indecision. Alrighty, we're gonna need a name for this guy, and it is going to be the Vector Radian. That is the name I have chosen for this sedan platform. And I need to do some modifying here to the body shell. Try and make this thing look a little bit unique. Alright, for this body shell, not 
a terribly large amount of stuff we can do with it. I mean, it's a generic sedan body, so it's going to look like a generic sedan pretty much no matter what you do with the uh, the adjustment in the in the body. So we're going to have to make sure our fixtures make this look like a unique and vector-esque vehicle. But first, we need to choose the chassis materials and such. And let's see. I'm going to go through here kind of quickly, but this is the one I have never really used galvanized steel for a chassis. I'm not really sure why, so I want to look at the differences. It is extremely high tooling cost, very high. Uh, and basically, that's it. Uh, its material costs are lower though, so it could have a difference there. Uh, and its environmental resistance is lower. I think I'm going to stick with the corrosive resistant steel. That seems like a good option. Front longitudinal. I'm going to go with McPherson Strata up front again, but for this guy we're going to put multi-length in the back. Uh, that seems like a good combination for a car of this size. And for the body, we are going to stick to our guns, we're going to go for the polymer body. I guess we're, we're kind of like Saturn in some ways, except our cars are not boring. <laughs> so that is what our body material is. I just want to look, okay, so now, now that we've picked our chassis materials and all that stuff, body materials, we can now see what size tires will fit under the fenders. That is one thing that is different in this Steam version, is that it is harder to see just what size uh, wheel arches you have on there. And 215, 225, let's go a little larger. We like 225 if we can get it. And these are 235. Okay, all good. Right, now, thinking, I'm thinking, I could potentially make these larger so that we have the potential to make even sportier models in the future. Uh, it looks goofy now, but if we do some offset on the wheels, we can maybe fix that. So let's go even larger. I won't necessarily use tires this big for the stock version, but uh, it's nice to have the ability to put them in the future if wanted. This is what I've come up with. This has taken me quite some time. I don't do a lot of sedans and I struggle to make cars that are not um, sports car looking. So I, I spent a lot of time with this one. I am keeping this family grill. So basically every vector car that is getting produced in this era should have something that looks just like this or similar to it. I like that idea of having elements of design on cars that make them look like they are a family of cars uh, connected to each other. Mazda is always really good about that, Dodge is always good about that, Alfa Romeo, uh, the companies that, you know, you see the front end of the car and you know, oh, okay, that's a Vector, oh, okay, that's a Dodge, that's, you know, that, that I think has some value in it. But let's now move on and change the color of this thing and get rid of this bright red, hopefully that will make me like it even more. Uh, let's see, how about a real dark blue? Maybe a little bit of gray into it as well. Something more like that. Yeah, that that I think makes the car look better. Just getting rid of that obnoxious red color. 
uh, it kind of kind of makes it look a little bit classier, which is what I was going for. It's real hard to design with these wheels too, uh, because the the wheels kind of detract from the look of it. So when we get that far, that will help. We are going to make it rear wheel drive. We are going to choose an engine, and it is the engine that we decided to use for this generation of Vector. Uh, and since we don't have the funding right now to go and make a new one, we are going to choose it. But we are going to make a new revision of this V8. Alrighty, just as a refresher, this is our Vector Technology V8 multipoint injection engine. It had a displacement of 3.8 liters. It used CastCast -cast Hyper Tech Tech. Uh, it has a single overhead cam. These kind of numbers down here. Let it is obviously NA. Multi-point, standard, it was running on regular, uh, 6400 RPM limit, and it made 241 horsepower, 247 foot-pounds of torque. There's still quite a bit left in this engine, and I think we might need a little bit more for this to, for this sedan body, because it makes a little bit more power. So let's make a new variant, one of these new awesome uh, abilities that we have, and we'll make this one the HO. And you see now that all of this is locked, so we can't change any of that. We can change the bottom end if wanted. I'm going to go for forged and hypertectic down here. Uh, let's see. We are still at our max bore and stroke. I will leave that as is for right now. I may try and destroke it if needed because I want this thing to rev a little bit more. All right, and we will up that cam profile. All right, let's see. Let's go up to maybe 47. Let's put VVT on it. Try and get a little bit more power out of this thing and do it somewhat cleanly. We will keep it NA. Whoops, clicked off the stream. There we go. Injection, multi point, single, uh, standard. I'm going to run this one on premium because it's the high output. And premium is actually kind of mid grade for the North American market, so it's not, uh, it's not too crazy. Let's do a 13.1, keep it pretty lean. Let's go up to maybe 60. Uh, let's try for a 6700 RPM limit. We'll see if it lives. And we'll do tubular. Dual with 175 should be enough. We'll do straight through reverse flow. Alright. First test. Okay, we're up to 260 horsepower. 255 foot pounds of torque. And we still have fuel octane left. Looks like our bottom end is starting to get a little bit unhappy though. Valve float is also occurring. Interesting, probably due to that single overhead cam nature. Now let's see. Now if we go down to 66, it's still there. Uh, it's not terrible. Uh, the reliability is 61.9. That's also not terrible. <laughs> uh, maybe I'd like to get it even a little bit higher. So let's actually spend a little money on this top end. All right, I think that actually pretty much. Uh, it's a valve float, right? And yeah, valve float is occurring, but it's green, so I don't think that's a really big issue. I think the bottom end's the bigger issue. Wow, we'd have to spend a lot of money on that bottom end quality to get rid of that, though. Uh, that may not be worth it. So, these are kind of a waste of money. So let's go back down to cast. Let's see, what is the what is the cost? Oops, I had trim. Pop it in. Go back to here. Cost is 95 and 1207. That's interesting. Um Let's go back down a little bit there. Let's go to a five. Plus five seems a little bit more realistic. And we'll just take it down to a 6500 RPM limit. And we're still making 260 horsepower. We still have a lot of fuel octane left. So let's see, about maybe increasing the compression. All right, that helped our economy, that helped our power. Let's do maybe even a little bit more cam profile, although we're not, we're not having any overrun, which is not good. Uh, you do want the engine to have a little bit of overrun. That's at 6,500. That's at 6,400. Okay, so that's starting, starting to have a little bit of a downward trend to it. Let's improve our ignition timing as well. We still have quite a bit of octane left. Alright. 
So now we get, we're actually uh, just barely improving economy. But let's reduce the fuel mixture a little bit as well. Are we hitting knock? Yeah, that's where we had knock. Alright, so what does this guy do? 261, 265. I like that high torque number. That'll help with this heavy car. And economy is up to 1955. Alright, I think I am happy with that for right now. So let us continue on to trimming this car out. And let's see, let's start, obviously, with the gearbox and that kind of stuff. What do we have? We still only have automatic and manual to choose from. We'll say that the baseline car comes with a manual transmission of six-speed nature. Because it is getting a little heavier, so we'll need that. Let's adjust the top speed for right now. We may have to adjust this later once we do the arrow. Alright, so let's do the spacing down to get it up to 60 miles an hour. Gonna put the viscous LSD in this way. We have that ability now. We're going to do medium compound roads on this thing, and let's put some 17s on it with some 205s front and back. Uh, maybe we'll see. Uh, but I am going to offset them to fill out those wheel wells. Maybe not as offset back. There we go. Let's put some better wheels on this thing. Yeah, those look good. What are these? No, I like the bigger spokes. Personally, they will be alloy wheels, and I think I'm happy otherwise. We'll do vented discs with two pistons up front. Put a lot of brake disc in those guys. And we'll do vent discs in the back as well, with just one pistons. And a little bit of a size difference. There we go. And we got a little bit more aggressive pads. That should do it. Alright, and then moving on. We're going to fully clad this thing to try and get our efficiency up. And then we are going to use just the minimal amount of cooling airflow is actually pretty low, which is nice. So we will have to go back and adjust our gearing now. And then we'll leave five seats. We're going to go for premium interior, so that's going to add some weight. I'm going to go for just standard equipment though. Power steering, ABS, and I'm going to do... Uh, we're going to do traction control as well. Standard 90 safety are just barely into 2000s, so it would be uh, advanced to go for that. It's going to cost quite a bit, so uh, we'll stay in the standard 90s for now. Progressive springs are nice. They are kind of expensive, uh, but they have the same production unit, so it's not terrible. Let's go for gas mono tubes and a sporty suspension, but I'm going to increase the ride height just a little bit to give us some comfort back. Let's see what we look like right now. Uh, detail stats. Drivability is 47.8. Sportiness 39.2. Comfort 36.1. Prestige 23.9. Safety 43.1. Those are pretty good numbers to start with, really. I'm not, I'm not terribly unhappy with that. Let's see what our cost is. This actually costs less to produce than the Vextron and has, in some ways, better better uh, performance, so that's really good. Uh, let's actually go to the test track and see. Our 0-60 to 60 is sitting about 6.4 right now, so it's a little bit slower. Obviously, it is a heavier car. I didn't see how heavy it was. It is weighing in at 1,301 kilos, which is a little bit heavier indeed than the Vextron was for sure. 25.1 uh, miles per gallon, so that's pretty similar to the Vextron, even though we're making a little bit more power. I think that uh, streamlinedness is probably helping. And let's see, the six gears are probably helping as well. I do need to adjust those. Ah, uh, yes. I do indeed. So we were short of our top speed. So that's good. Uh, let's see, that gets us up to 25.7 miles per gallon, and we're actually getting better 0 to 60. That gets us up to 26. I would like that. That would be nice. Even if it does reduce our drivability, sportiness, and prestige a little, increasing that MPG is important. This is the early 2000s after all, and gas prices are starting to go up to crazy numbers. So to have a car that's a little bit more efficient would be nice. 
and to get 26 miles per gallon in a sedan with a V8 is something that uh, definitely seems to have a good place in the market. Our comfort is quite good, as is our sportiness, and the sportiness of drivability looks pretty good as well. I believe, yeah, just that ride height is helping everything but sportiness, and I think that's good. I would like to make it even a little bit more comfortable. Uh, if we can keep that sportiness up above 39 and get us some more drivability and comfort, then I think it's all good. All right. 190. I agree, it seems pretty good. But let's go actually go with it. 187.5 keeps our sportiness at 39.5, but increased our our comfort and drivability overall. Uh, so I think that's a good a good number to go with. Has understeer but it has it in a pretty uh, smooth way it's not it's not a snappy understeer so we're, we're heading towards sportiness uh, not necessarily towards the tame side but then it uh, it understeers so it stays you know pretty drivable all right now that we have all of these awesome graphs and everything on every menu we can look at some options to maybe try and get this thing even better uh, spend our money wisely because our cost of this car is actually still pretty low in my opinion So I'm gonna try and spend some money on some things to get our MPG up Cooling flaps are one way to do that. It gives us more drivability uh, Comfort and safety as well in some way that I have no idea how uh, But it does indeed increase our miles per gallon by almost a full mile per gallon and only cost us about $200 and an hour of production cost or production unit cost so I think it's money well spent, and it's maybe money that other companies wouldn't necessarily spend, so I feel willing to do it. And we can look in here, we can see, um, let's see, what is traction control giving us? It's giving us more drivability uh, in a pretty, pretty significant way versus just a little bit of material cost, so it's definitely worth keeping, I think. Uh, we can see what the different oh wow yeah look at the difference there uh, this would give us a huge huge bump in safety however it's gonna hurt our miles per gallon it's gonna hurt our reliability it's gonna majorly increase our material cost and production units uh, so safety is important but I think standard 90 safety is the way to go for this car uh, I just don't know that we could compete uh, with the other cars in the market with that much weight and that poor miles per gallon. Really want to keep that MPG up for still having a nice sporty uh, driving characteristic. Uh, standard entertainment is fine. This is just the base model car, so we can leave that for later. Uh, I think that's it for here, and I think that's it that I kind of want to look at for this vehicle. I think I am pretty happy with it for now, and we will call this the... Radian and it uses the new HO VTV8 MPI. I think I think I am happy. I think I am confident in this car's ability to uh, perform well in its market. And that is what we will look at next time. We will build some era correct competition for the car. Uh, we'll look at some real world manufactured cars and build them in automation as replicas to try and compete against the Radian. But thanks as always for watching, thanks to all the new subscribers and new fans of automation. I hope you're excited about the game and the series. I will see you next time.